Good evening. Hope you had a wonderful uh, Reformation Day, and uh, today is the observance of All Saints Day. Hope you had a ho happy Halloween as well. What a beautiful week of weather we've had. It was just a one announcement before we get started. In a couple weeks, uh, two weeks from tomorrow, we'll have our November voters meeting to approve the budget. If you'd like to take a look at that, we've got copies available uh, if you didn't pick up one of those. Uh, also, the plan Redeemer will take their vote next week, and we'll take our vote on the, on the voters meeting to begin the partnership between the two congregations uh, starting in December. So that's exciting news that's coming up very quickly. So I invite you to be a part of that meeting at 1130 on Sunday, November 17th. Uh, today is All Saints Day, and it is the day that, uh, as every year, I like to point out that it's one of the days, one of the big feast days, that we uh, remember an event in Jesus' life. And it is, an, it's, the church year starts, you know, with Advent and Christmas and the beginning of Jesus' life, and it goes through follows him with the disciples until Lent and his suffering and death on Good Friday, resurrection on Easter and the sending of the Spirit. And all that was for one purpose, to gather to himself a holy people, his saints. And so on All Saints Day, we remember the faithfulness of our God to his saints, uh, those before us and we on earth who uh, continue to long for that day when uh, he will come and to cry out, how long, O oh Lord, how long? And so, for all the saints, I invite you to stand as we begin our worship and song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to call upon God in prayer and praise and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness. 
and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For you are my rock and my fortress, and for your name's sake you lead me and guide me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you knit your faithful people together of all times and places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living that together with them we may come have prepared for those who love you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading for the Feast of All Saints is from the Revelation to St. John, chapter 7. 
Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, do not harm the earth or the seas or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed, 144,000, sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. 12,000 from the tribe of Judah were sealed, 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 from the tribe of Gad, 12,000 from the tribe of Asher, 12,000 from the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 from the tribe of Levi, 12,000 from the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin were sealed. After this, I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we read Psalm 149 responsibly. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the godly. Let Israel be glad in his maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Let the godly exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands. To execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute on them the judgment written. This is honor for all his godly ones. Praise the Lord. Glory, Glory be, be to the Father, God, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit. Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is in 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now as one way to give glory to our Lord for his word and for his works, I invite you as you're able to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely. On my account, rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We respond in faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we sing.
Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ on this All Saints Day. As we observe it, imagine the scene. There's a child at Sunday school, and after a lesson about Jesus' resurrection, they ask, so Jesus is alive? Where do we see him? When do we get to see Jesus? We hear all these stories about Jesus. When do we get to see him? The pastor bends down, as I often have and many has pastors have, and they say, hey, guess what? In church, there he is. You see him right there, present in the bread and the cup and the saints gathered around the altar. They look at you with a kind of quizzical look. Is that true? Wondering if they believe you or what it would mean for it to be true. That Jesus is present there, body and blood, for them. And all of the saints gathered around with praise and petition in his name. Communion every week. The reason that uh, things have trended that way is as a reminder that the Lord is there for you, his body for you the only body of the risen Christ that the New Testament knows or speaks of, refers not to some entity that's sitting on a throne in heaven. It refers to his body, it's the bread that we break and the wine that we drink as we are gathered together into holy communion. You are the body of Christ, Paul preaches and individually members of it, for in one spirit, we who were baptized are baptized into one body, Jew and Greek, slave and free, and all are made to drink of one spirit. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation, a koinonia, a communion in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not Participation, koinonia, communion in the body of Christ. We who are many all part, are one body, for we partake of the one bread. Consistently throughout, that's the body, the church in Ephesians, he preaches, is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of God in Jesus Christ then brings on those quizzical looks, both about his presence in the Lord's Supper and this phrase that we focus on on All Saints Day, the communion of saints. It rearranges what we think, what constitutes, what counts as a body. For you are the body of Christ. The body of the risen Lord just is those believers who are baptized into him, gathered around the bread and the wine and praise and petition in his name. It is the public form that his body takes in the world. The gate of heaven, it's a quote from Martin Luther. If heaven is the place where God is present to his creation, the gate of heaven, God's body to earth come down. What if it's true? Jesus is here, and you can see God. That's what it means. On All Saints Day, we finish the story, we round out the story of Jesus' body. As he tells it to us, that he didn't just come to live a life that you can tell about in Sunday school. He lived a life to gather to himself a holy people, his saints. And if this is the gate of heaven, then available to us in participation, koinonia, communion with those who have been made holy by Jesus. The focus then is on what the saints are focusing on. We read it in Revelation. They're gathered around the throne of the Lamb who sits there. Their focus is on Jesus. Their holiness comes from Jesus, we get a lot of questions about this, about the saints, or 
Saints, just one who's made holy. So all those who are baptized have been made holy by the blood of Jesus. How do we regard the rest of the saints? If you ask the Augsburg Confession, there are three, three ways we hold them in high regard. We give thanks that God gives such great gifts to his church, right? And we look at them and see the example given in the Augsburg Confession as we see in Peter, the example of God's mercy towards sinners like us. And the third way that we honor the saints is by imitating first their faith and then their virtues, depending on our callings, right? So if there's a saint that was a mother, great to imitate her mother the way that she cared for her children. Or if a saint is, they use the example of a king, you can imitate King David in the way that he led his army. And the one of the, at Cana, right, the mother of our Lord, one of the few words that we get of hers in public, what does she say? Do whatever he tells you. And on the night when he was betrayed, he says, do this in remembrance of me. That the saints focus yours and mine, is on this body of Christ, given to make you and I holy, just like it was for those. And so we pray every time we gather to do this in remembrance of him, with all the angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, where they cry out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The earth is full of his glory. What if it's true? There is uh, <clears throat> made a part of his body that participating as the saints who've come before us, this is the day we remember those saints who rest from their labors, as Charles Wesley puts it in the hymn, uh, participating as they have in his body and blood the communion of saints is a communion in Jesus. And so, making available to us his holy friends, the ones that he laid down his life for, the one he gave his blood that they would wash their robes in for Diana and Jean and Gary and Tony and Bob and Michael and Michelle and Al, and Mary, and Fred, and B, and Andy. The communion of saints works that way, that as he was their Lord in life, so now he gives them to be available to us in his body. There's a, a story, because there's a lot of emotions about this you probably know more than a few saints that you remember on this day with whom you gathered around the bread and the wine in praise and petition in the name of Jesus. And so there's a lot of intense emotions. There's this story uh, from a really great book. It's uh, a journalist goes to the Middle East and he visits all these old monasteries in largely Muslim countries now, but they're Christian monasteries that go back Way. It's called From the Holy Mountain, really written by William Dalrymple. And he tells about this story about visiting this monastery in Egypt. It's called St. Anthony's. St. Anthony was the first Christian hermit, monk. And he visits this cave and he meets this monk, Father Dioscoros, who tells Dalrymple a story about the body of Jesus in the communion of saints. He says, you won't believe this. He lowers his voice to a whisper. He won't believe this, but we had some visitors from Europe a couple years ago, Christians, some sort of Protestant, who said they didn't believe in the communion of saints. The monk strokes his beard, wide-eyed with disbelief. No, he continued, I'm not joking. I had to take the Protestants aside and explain that we believe that St. Anthony and all his fathers and mothers have not died, that they live with us, continually protecting us and looking after us. When they're needed, when we go to them at the altar, they appear and sort out our problems. Can the monks see them? Who, Protestants? <laughs> no, the deceased, the saints. Well, take for last week, for instance. 
The monk tells him the Bedouin from the desert are always bringing their sick to us for healing. Normally it's something quite simple. We let them kiss an icon, give them an aspirin, and send them on their way. But last week, they brought us a small girl who was possessed by a demon. We took the girl into our church, and as it was time for Vespers, one of the fathers went out to ring the bell for prayers. When he saw this, the devil inside the girl began to cry, don't ring that bell, please, don't ring that bell. We asked him, why not? Because, replied the devil, when you ring that bell, it's not just the living monks who come into the church. All the holy souls of the saints join with you too, as well as the great multitudes of angels and archangels. How can I remain in the church when that happens? I'm not staying in a place like that. At that moment, the bell began to ring, the girl shrieked, and the devil left her. Father Dioscoros clicked his fingers just like that, so you see, that proves it. The journalist asks, proves what? Now, just as the church fathers taught, the separated souls are hanging out around the altar because the consecrated bread and wine of the Eucharist, the post-resurrection body of Christ, are the closest they can get until the general resurrection to getting their bodies back. Now, I wonder, as you hear that story, what you think. Two things come to mind immediately, being some kind of Protestant, <laughs> a Lutheran kind, we look for the promises of God, and there are no such promises about those hanging around the elements of the Eucharist, longing for their bodies back. We don't know that that's where they are. But the second point, that what this proves is that they come to the Lord's Supper because it's the closest they get until the resurrection of the dead to get their bodies back. There are two places in Scripture, one's pointed to by the Augsburg Confession, the other is right before what we read in Revelation, where it seems like those in heaven are petitioning God with one question. The angel in Zechariah says, O Lord of hosts, how long? Will you have no mercy on Jerusalem and the cities of Judah against which you have been angry these 70 years? And in Revelation 6, those clothed in white robes, they get them from one place. When he opens the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God. For the witness they had borne, they cried out with a loud voice, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you will judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then they were each given a white robe and told to rest a little while longer, until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers should be complete, who were to be killed as they themselves have been. The question about the invocation of the saints is not whether the saints are praying, but whether we're ever promised that they hear us, because there is one who has promised that he hears us. Whatever you ask in my name, this one says, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And when the preacher to the Hebrews talks about what Christ did for his saints, that Christ has entered not a place made with human hands, which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself, that his blood purifies, prepares a place for his saints to be with him forever, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf, it wasn't to offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters the holy places every year with the blood not his own, for then he would have to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world, but as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for man to die once and after that comes judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. There are saints on earth and saints in heaven offering the same question to our Lord, how long, how long before you will come and judge the living and the dead and all these Hebrews remembers all those saints that came before the great hall of faith in Hebrews 11. In faith, Abraham trusted God. What does he say? All these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised. Since God had provided something better for us that apart from us, 
they should not be made perfect. What if it's true? Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which so clings closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising its shame, and is seated at the right hand of God. Because one thing that I wonder about as we talk about saints, it's a kind of temptation, I think, sometimes, that reflection on the saints presents us. What if this is true? That as those on earth who offer up the cry, how long? It's tempting to deal with people who no longer irritate us, with people who don't get impatient with us, with people who don't forget about us or neglect us, who don't offend or hurt us, we prefer to think about them and not about those irritating saints that we gather around every week. What if that's true? What recourse do the saints on earth have in such a communion as this? The same one who promises to hear your prayers, promised to send a Holy Spirit. And in your weakness and mine, as those who have been made holy and still wait for the day, to believe that by my own reason or strength, I can't believe in Jesus Christ or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in that true faith, in the same way that he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. And what does it mean finally? That on the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. In Jesus' name, amen. And may the peace that passes all of our understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds in him unto life everlasting. I invite you as you're able to stand. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father in heaven, remember the poor in spirit who gather this day to receive your grace and steadfast love by which we are made rich in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. God, our Father, you have set apart a people for yourself and washed them in the blood of the Lamb to be your own. Restore us daily through repentance and forgiveness and renew our hearts and spirits in holiness, righteousness, and faithfulness. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, bless all ministers of the gospel and all congregations committed to their care, that the comfort of Christ's sacrifice and the joy of his resurrection may be proclaimed to all who grieve their sin and mourn their dead. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we know your deep love for us, for you have called us your children. Deepen the love of children for their parents and parents for their children. Strengthen fathers and mothers in their vocations that they may raise their children in the way they should go. Hear the prayers of those who long for families. Sustain all expectant mothers and their little ones. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, remember all civil authorities in your kindness and give them wisdom, courage, and integrity. Remember your servants, Joey, Charlie, and Alex. Lord, in your mercy. 
God of compassion, be near to the sick, the aged and the infirm, the dying, the grieving, and all those afflicted. Especially we lift up Marie, Cindy, Bud, Maria, Faith, and Sherry, along with Andrew, Charlie, Pauline, Linda, Ernie, Pastor Rickus, Buster, Connie, Karen, Herbert, Terry, Don, and Debbie. We lift up all who are homebound, including Caroline and Michelle. Grant healing according to your will and comfort them with the certain hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Lord, gather us in the blessed sacrament around the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, whom saints and angels adore around your eternal throne. Lord, in your mercy. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord henceforth. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors for their deeds. Follow them. Let us remember with thanksgiving those who have gone before us with the sign of faith, for they were redeemed by God. He gave them new life through his Son in holy baptism. He nourished them in the company of his people at his holy table. In his mercy and wisdom, he summoned them to his nearer presence so that they may rest in his blissful peace forever. In joyful expectation of the resurrection to life eternal, we remember before the Lord our departed family and friends who have gone before us in faith and all those in our hearts and minds this day. For Diana. Jean. Gary. Tony. Bob. Michael. Michelle. Al. Mary. Fred. Beatrice. And Andy. Almighty God, we remember with thanksgiving those who loved and served you in your church on earth and who now rest from their labors. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joy of your heavenly kingdom through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our offering is collected at either entrance. If you would, before you leave, please fill out one of the welcome cards with your name and any prayer requests that you have. We'd love to be praying with you this week. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. 
It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whom the hope of the blessed resurrection shines forth, so that those who mourn may be consoled with the promise of eternal life. In you, O Lord, life is transformed and not taken away so that this earthly body is prepared for an eternal home in heaven. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth adored, heaven on earth with full acclaim, shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, gave it to them saying, drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
And now, as you're able, invite you to stand as we sing. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat>
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Yeah. Oh, he reused them, yeah. <laughs> 